Hey everyone, my name's Ash and I want to welcome to All Things Dentistry. This week I posted a maxillary molar and I want to walk you through the tips and the hints that I've learned over the past 20 years of doing dentistry and also those tips that I've learned from my mentors and other colleagues and experts and how to tackle these calcified cases with confidence in one sitting. And stick around to the end of this video because I'll have a download link for the instruments that I'm using in this case and also a quick operatory checklist setup guide. So this patient, 55 year old female, presented with a lot of pain to hot and cold and biting pain. So we diagnosed her with symptomatic irreversible pulpitis with symptomatic apical periodontitis. And we removed all the decay and the undermined enamel and that's what we were left with. We decided to quickly build up the tooth just using a layering technique. This is one of those situations that even though this restoration is being removed, you think I should have just taken the extra two minutes to put in a sectional or a Toppelmeyer band on this tooth to build it up a lot quicker. But we're ready now to start our endo access. And the reason why I wanted to put that layering technique on there is to contain our irrigant. So here I'm just using a number four large long surgical burr just to slowly remove dentin to finally find the pulp chamber. And you'll see me enter in the pulp chamber right about now. So I'm slowly unroofing the pulp chamber. And normally if, there's a, if it's a large pulp chamber, I'm going to use a non-cutting tip burr called the endo -Z burr. But I've tried those in cases like this where the pulp chamber is not very large. And all it does is kind of burn the dentin and skate around. So now I've exposed the main canals, the mesial buckle, distal buckle, and palate. And I'm just gonna use my Wave 1 Gold primary to open up all the orifices. Irrigation along the entire process, we all know is super important. This tooth was pretty straightforward, so I just used a 6, 8, 10 file to get working length. And on the apex locator, well, what I'm looking for is one red bar, and I subtract 0.5 millimeters from that. So I know you're all curious, like, where's MB2? Well, I'm asking the same question, but because it's not readily available and I can't place a file in it right now or even see an orifice, I'm going to clean and shape mesial buckle 1, distal buckle, and the palate, and then tackle MB2 once those are all clean and shaped. So I'm going to irrigate lots and lots and lots, and we'll refinish cleaning and shaping MB1 and all the other canals as well. This is just a side view of taking a look at, with a microscope how accurate you can get with your rubber stop. After I do the Wave 1 Gold Primary, I'm going to recheck my lengths because I usually find that I lose approximately, depending on the length of the canal, a half millimeter to a millimeter in length. I finish all my canals with a Wave 1 Gold Medium, minimum, and if a palette, for example, is large, I'll use a hand file to finish the equal third. So I've done cleaning and shaping, and I'm just going to use my slow round burr, number two, in my electric hand piece to trough and remove some more of that calcification just to look for MB2. So we're going to fit our gutta percha points and then complete our final irrigation protocol with sodium hypochlorite and EDTA. Time to dry our canals. We'll do a couple cycles of paper points. And now it's time to place BC sealer in the coronal half. We'll place our gutta percha cones and take a radiograph to check our lengths. Looks good to me. So with the cones placed and we're happy with our radiograph, we're going to sear off the tops of the gutta percha points but I'm still not happy with not finding MB2. I'm just super lightly troughing with the Munts burr now, and I'm gonna use sodium epichlorate to change the color of the pulpal floor, and I see the pulpal floor. I'm just gonna say that likely it's either not there or I just can't get into it. Place a cotton pellet, and then we place some cavit. Take a shift shot, if we look at the mesial buckle root, the gutta perch is centered, so, likely, no MB2. Thanks so much for joining me. So if you're interested in increasing your endo efficiency, click here in the cards to download my quick reference guide for setting up your operatory and some of the gear that I used. And I've also placed it down in the description. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and place your comments below. And we'll see you next week.